Hey guys, it's Sin, also known as Redefining Sin here on YouTube, also on Instagram and TikTok. And we're back with another video, obviously. So as you guys can tell by the title today, I'm going to be hopefully helping you guys with like reading your word. We're going to go through how I study my Bible and things I found helpful for me when reading the word and understanding it and just gaining revelation, wisdom, knowledge, all the things. Okay. So without further ado, let's jump into the video. And if you haven't already, subscribe because your girl is on her road to 500 and I know that we can do it. I know that God can do it. We can do it. So let's just get to it, okay? Right? Love you. Thank you in advance. Also, quick fit check. Bam! Uh, today is my dad's birthday, so shout out to my dad. We are celebrating him. And birthday man chose the colors for today, and that was black and khaki. So that's why we're here. We're here. We're here. We're here. Right. So, so first, we're going to start off with the versions that I read. So I have two Bibles right now. And my first Bible is a KJV Bible, King James Version. And listen, hear me out. Hear me out before y'all go crazy. Try it for yourself. I was, I too was a person that was like, KJV, no thank you. Make it plain. Then I started to read it for myself. Started to read it on my own terms and gain my own understanding and just, you know, ask the Lord to help me. And now KJV is my, it's my girl. This is my girl, this is my guy. This is my, yeah. However, when I do hit those seasons or those moments where I'm like, I just need it plain. I don't have, I don't, I don't feel like trying to figure it out. I go to my NIV, my NIV Bible. So, and the NIV is the New International Version. And this is more clearer, more present day situations. So these are the versions that I read when I study. Um, I used to also read the easy to read version. I would have like all three pulled up and just cross-reference all of them to see what they're talking about. But I found that the easy to read version was too easy for me. Like I felt like it wasn't challenging me. And I know that the Bible talks about like when we read our word or just when we get to understand God and his character, that we understand the mysteries of him and that come with him. And I feel like the easy to read version took that away from me, if that makes sense. Like obviously God is a God who can do exceedingly abundantly above all. So if we do seek him for those mysteries, even in the simplest things, he'll give it to us. But for me and my household, it wasn't coming in. And I feel like that's like amplified version, messages versions, like they're good and they'll give it to you plain. Like sometimes I'm not saying that I don't use them, but like on on a on a day to day, this is where I stay. So these are the versions, right? Um I also have a notebook. This is my second notebook, actually. Got this at Target. If you guys are curious about any of the things, well, let's go back. This Bible I got from Amazon, I believe. Um, I'll put all links in the bio. This I got from my friend. Um, but if I find it, again, I'll put the link. And, and I love this because, like, as you guys can see, it's kind of, like, on a colorway. Like, I have a blue thing going here. So, love this book so much. And we love a book, a notebook that has this. And it has one of these strings to hold your pages back. So, this is where I just, like, Bible study notes when I'm at church, sermons. I don't know if you guys are note takers, but, like, get back to writing. Like, the phone is good, the phone is there, the phone is all good for us, but also the phone comes with distractions. Like, your Instagram notifications are popping up, your TikTok notifications are popping up. Like, when you're in your Bible, at least for me, when I'm in my Bible, like, I try to just be in my Bible. And sometimes it's hard. Not saying that I don't struggle either. But, like, that's why I like writing notes physically because it helps me get off my phone or, like, separate the two. Then this is a new edition the ziploc bag is a new edition but the colors have always been there so i have a bunch of colored pens and highlighters and all of that things and you guys are probably like oh my gosh aesthetic da, 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 da. no like of course it's i love that if you want to be a part of the aesthetic girlies do you do you boo but for me they have meaning and 
we're gonna go through them because obviously i'm here to just show you guys how i study and hopefully it's helpful to you and even in my bible i wrote it down like in the beginning i color coded each thing so for me blue represents promises of the lord like whenever i'm reading my bible and it's something that the lord is promising or even his voice i'll highlight it in blue just to remind myself that like say if the lord right if it's pink um these are reminders whether it's something i need to remind myself like for example lean not on your own understanding but submit all your ways to the lord and he will guide your steps that's something i need to remember i'm a write it or highlight it in pink and i have a pen to correspond with the highlighters because sometimes i'll be in a section i'll be writing something and like i just want to make like a circle or a star and i don't want to make big marks so i don't want to highlight it that's what the pens are for i like to use the pens for like little notes okay so for example like um matthew 28 verses 18 through 20 this is when the lord gives us instruction to go this king james by the way king james version go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the father and the son and of the holy spirit teaching them to observe all things whatsoever i have commanded you etc etc so i highlighted that in blue because that was the lord talking and then again in blue i just wrote down like instructions on being the salt and the light and if you guys are curious about the salt and the light, you can visit Matthew 5, 13 to 16. But yeah, those are my pens. I use the yellow to give me meanings or like important facts. Like in the beginning of the Bible, there's a lot of names. Jesus. Jesus is so creative with his names. There's so many names and so many meanings. So like when I first started reading the beginning, hold on, let me try to find it for y'all. Okay. So, for example, in Genesis 32, verse 30, it says, And Jacob called the name of the place Peniel, for I have seen God face to face. Because Peniel means seeing God face to face. So, I highlighted that in yellow. And that's just, again, meanings or important facts to me. So, I would recommend and encourage you guys to, if you don't mind writing in your Bible, or even if this is something that you do in your notes and not your Bible, get color coordinate things to help you. Um, I, it's definitely been fruitful for me to just understand. And even when I'm going back to things, I can just like automatically know like, okay, if it's in blue, this is what God said. Or if it's in pink, this is a reminder. Or if it's in yellow, it's an important fact. Um, I have the purple and the green. And this is more so, I'm still trying to find things for this, but these are more so like, I associate the green with like a go. Like if it's a go thing or like something I need to do or something that somebody's doing in terms of like, showing me the way how to live um a christian life like the bible talks about having examples ahead of us and like people putting their faith in action this is what i think of like the people who are go are like good examples of obedience and then purple we have right now as in just like i like purple <laughs> so it came with the pack so that's why we're here let me put my stuff back in the bag and maybe colors colored pencils highlighting all that stuff is not your vibe i would encourage you to see scope out the scenery see what is your vibe personalizing it personalizing your time in reading your word is just like your relationship with god like make it your own i'm not saying this is how i study so this is how you need to study i'm saying this is how i study and if you're struggling hopefully something in this video will help you catch that Okay, so going back to my notebook, this notebook, when I use it for like if I'm having a personal Bible study or if I'm at Bible study or if I'm in my sermon, whatever the case may be, like it's notes. And I, sometimes what I like to do is I like to break down the chapter or whatever I'm reading by section. So for example, in the KJV version, like the titles are at the top in my Bible, like they're at the top, but they're not really sectioned off the way my niv bible is so like this one has the sections and it has chapters like you can see clear not chapters but paragraphs set up so like i like to 
I sometimes I like to break down the paragraph in both versions what I've gleaned from it what I've understood questions I might have go back and keep going keep going go back if I have to all the things all the things that's what we have this 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 beauty here a notebook definitely encourage a notebook y'all and it's something that you can go back to and you know just dwell on so many good notes are here I need to read my bible book the way i read my journal like i go back to my journal sometimes but i need to go back to like things that i've understood from god's word when is the last time you revisited the notes you took from your bible oh jesus we're going to deliver some people today okay so another thing that is like probably one of the most helpful things that I, to help me read is i had I got it from the Bible app. Shout out to the Bible app. And I'm going to try to find it. If I don't find it, I'm going to figure out a way so you guys can have it. One day reading a devotional or something, I came across tips for reading God's word. And it's like, I sent it to myself so I can have it. But it's a, it's a whole shabiel. And it's five steps. And I'm just going to go through the steps. I'm going to put them on the screen. So step one is prepare your heart. You are my refuge and my shield. I have put my hope in your word. Psalm 119 verse 114, NIV version. Start your quiet time by reciting this poem, then write out your concerns, worries, visualize putting everything that's competing for your attention into a box and giving it to God. So for me, not only do I just think about my concerns, but like in this moment where I'm preparing my heart or like, you know, when people say like posture your heart, like I like to posture my heart in trying to get it to be still quiet and receptive to the Lord like I'm just asking God like shut me up so that you can dwell in me Holy Spirit can dwell in me so that in this time of me reading your word it can be fruitful and that I can have like the ultimate focus be on gaining from your word connecting with you all the things all the things you want ask you shall receive step two is ask God to speak to you. Before you dive into scripture, ask God to help you understand his word and show you how to apply scripture correctly to your life. He promises to give us wisdom when we ask for it. And that is a fact. So for me, like plainly as it says, like I'm like, Lord, when I take this time to read your word today, I ask that you give me knowledge wisdom understanding discernment and just give it me a reality check how does it apply to my life how does it apply to me in my current situation and what can i do how how am i showing up like what you have me read because oftentimes we read the bible and we're like omg that person and then it's like holy spirit gotta check you like that's you babe <laughs> right now the lord is telling me i'm i'm operating as job <laughs> Step three is unpack the passage. This is one of my favorites because this really helps you like dive into it, especially for those who like, yeah, I hear you talking, but like, eh, I need more clarity. Unpack the passage. When was the passage written? Who was the intended audience? What is the main theme? Are there any repetitive words or phrases? If so, why? What does the passage show you about God and other people? Read through the passage several times, each time answering a different question. Pay attention to any phrases or ideas that continue to stand out to you. This one right here has definitely helped me unpack the passage so much so that like sometimes when you read you miss things but like those specific questions has helped me like understand the context behind what is happening in the bible or like in the chapter that i'm reading what is being said why phrases are happening so many times and y'all know like my my believers my my bible readers like the numbers mean something the amount of times means something y'all know seven everybody knows seven is the number of completion yeah yeah okay so Tap into why he said that three times. Mm, mm, good stuff right here. Number four says, summarize the scripture. Spend several minutes asking God to show you the truths of his word. Then write down one to three takeaways from the passage. This will help you process the insights God shows you. So this is your time. Like, you know, you've already asked, you already prayed to God what you want to glean. But now ask him to reveal to you what it is that he wants you to take away and write it down. Like oftentimes the Lord reveals stuff to us and it might be 
it might be so quick that we miss it but like this is probably gotta And last but not least, <laughs> exercise the application. Write down two to three ways you want to practically apply the scriptures you've studied and then regularly check your progress. And once you finish meditating on scripture, spend a few minutes in silent reflection and then throughout your day, reflect on all that you have processed. This right here, this is, this is the blueprint, right? This is not the Hunger Games book. This is this, this. God's word is alive and active. So that means as many times as you seek his word, as you seek his character, as you wanting to know, like there always will be something to discover, something to learn. Even if you have read that chapter 15 times, 50 times, asking you shall receive. If you want more, the Lord will give you more. So I just hope that this was helpful for anybody who is struggling or like, where do I start? Where do I turn? Um, slow down. I would say slow down and just uh, wait on the lord like sometimes i read the bible and let's be honest i'm like what am i reading sometimes i read and i don't even take notes sometimes i read and i'm just like huh? but it's just like in getting in the atmosphere staying in the atmosphere not reading and it's just like okay i'm done for today but like reading going back maybe you need to put on your worship music maybe you need to create an atmosphere that's not just reading and writing questions and answering the questions but like get into the atmosphere with the lord in the same way that you would worship you find what makes it helpful for you these are just these are just my tips these are just my tips again i encourage you ask you shall receive if you want to know if you want to understand you will you will because your earnest heart is asking for it and if you don't understand the lord says the bible says we we ask for things and we don't receive them because it's not earnest because our heart is not there like one time i was reading the bible and i'm just like dang like i feel like i'm rushing through the bible like i feel like i'm i usually like i'm a i like to be in my bible so like when i'm not reading the bible it throws me off my rocker because i'm like what's happening then i went to a bible study and i'm like before i started the bible study i'm like lord slow me down when I tell you one chapter, Hebrews 6, I spent four hours in that one chapter. And it was so, so good. Like, that's what I'm saying. Asking you shall receive. Like, knock and the door will be open. I'm like, Lord, slow me down. He did. He slowed me down so much. It was such a fruitful time. I'm about to. This is it right here. Hebrews 6. So it started here and it goes. goes and it goes ah oh, and it goes so yeah mm. hebrew six is a song mm -hmm. so with all of that being said i hope you have gained from this video i hope that you have understood or you can apply something i said to the way that you study and read and if you guys have any tips feel free to comment them down below my way is is my way it's not the only way so feel free to share how you study things that have been helpful to you i'm always looking for new ways and new things to just help me be with, with the lord so let me know let me know down below and if you like the video like the video give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already to redefining sins and if you want to see more of me feel free to check me out on instagram and tiktok at redefining sin until next time i love you but jesus loves you